You're listening to the Intentional Parents Podcast, brought to you by Intentional. Intentional is all about spiritual formation in the family. We desire to bring biblical hope and practical help. Enjoy this week's conversation. All right, welcome back to the Intentional Parents Podcast. We are here today, all four of us, hanging out. It's summer. It's happening. (laughs) Everyone's a lot tanner. Everyone looks great. (laughs) We've been out in the sun. (laughs) Thank you. We were in Maui recently. Elizabeth and I just got back. What a great trip that was. Uh, Shout out to Hope Chapel and that whole team. What a great Mm -hmm. crew. And we had just a lovely time with that, that, all those folks there. And that might be one of the reasons a little tanner this year. Yeah, that sped up the base tan. That sped it up pretty well. (laughs) But what a great crew. Phil and I, and thank you for taking the kids for seven days. It was actually eight. It was actually eight. 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 (laughs) But who's counting? Not that I'm counting. counting. (laughs) Yeah. No, you were, no, you know, you're right because we left early on a Thursday morning and didn't get home till late on a Thursday night. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very late. And you picked us up at midnight. We tried to talk you out of it. True love. Thank you. It was. That's right. And you dropped us off early too. Mm-hmm. Oh, they were not. They also were not great love. times. Yes. Yeah. Oh, super. Well, pops. thank you. We keep hearing about uh, almond and pops didn't make us do this, or almond and pops didn't make us do that. <laughs> like, yeah, that's the point. And it was. I think we were talking, Phil. You and I. The you were saying, oh, you know, I hope, I hope, you know, reentry goes well. And I was like, yeah, I mean, they're just going to have to get used to the word no again. <laughs> that's the biggest. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, it's actually kind of fun to be the grandparent after years of being, you know, the parent. Mm-hmm. It's really fun to be able to say, you know what? It's not my child. <laughs> Do what you want. <laughs> I mean, not, not totally. I mean, obviously. But I mean... It's not my job to parent them this week. No. That's your job. And you do such a great job with it. Hmm. It gives us the freedom to just kind of enjoy them and mm-hmm. learn hmm. them a little a little oh, closer. Yeah. yeah. They are they are all very fun and very funny. Yeah. Um well today one of the, you know, we're gonna jump into a topic about common lies that we believe, uh, especially as parents, uh, as people is a good way to say it, but we're going to kind of couch it in some of the parental language. Um, as we do just a couple things to let everyone know, uh, we are going to be in forest home in just a week or two. And we're really excited about that. So if you, I don't know if there's tickets left, but if there is, you can check it out. We're going to be doing a whole week of teachings there at family camp style. So check that out. The links in the show notes. And then also thank you to everyone who has rated and subscribed and joined us on the journey. So appreciate that. If you haven't had a chance to rate or subscribe, if you're on Apple podcasts mm-hmm. or Spotify, do that. If you're on YouTube, feel free to subscribe, give, give us a thumbs up algorithms. We don't control them, but those are very helpful for us. So thank you for everyone that's done it. Keep on doing it. Super helpful. Um, so today let's talk about common lies that we believe as family members, as parents, as spouses, uh, something that we were talking about uh, before. And I know that you, Diane and Elizabeth, you guys talked this in, about this topic or idea in the guilt and shame teaching that you did at the motherhood retreat. Is that, yeah. is that right? Mm-hmm. By the way, the motherhood retreat's happening. This yeah. little side note, as we're getting into this content, that's, that's exciting. We have had so many fun conversations. So mm-hmm. if you haven't had a chance to sign up for that, feel free to uh, check that out in the show notes as well. But we can't wait to see so many um that are going to be there Mm -hmm. but that said we were talking about the concept that so many lies especially the lies that we believe are 90 percent truth and 10 percent a lie and that Mm -hmm. a lot of the times uh that's how the enemy does it he tells you something that's almost all the way true Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. there's a majority of it or a part of it that's a lie and so uh we want to talk about what are those lies that we believe this is a hugely biblical concept um so phil i know you had a couple scriptures to to you know, just foundationally for us. So would you start us with some of those foundational scriptures? Sure. And any opening thoughts? Well, or before any we talk thoughts? about some of the lies we believe, we I think it'd be good to think about where the lies come from. Mm. Yes. And because uh, they don't come from God, <coughs> excuse me, they don't come from the Lord because the Lord is truth. Mm-hmm. He, mm-hmm. He's righteousness. You know, Jesus was full of grace and truth. You know, John chapter one tells us he was 100% grace and 100% truth blended perfectly. That's God. So uh, John eight forty four. I remember as a new believer, man, the light was going on and I was realizing all the lies I'd believed and all the sin I'd committed because of, you know, the lies I was believing and living for myself. And I came across John eight forty four for the first time because I, I was even 
singing, you know, in a, in a band as a non-believer singing love songs that actually sounded beautiful, but as a follower of Jesus, there were some truth and lies in them. Mm. You know, that without this person, mm -hmm. I'll never be fulfilled, you know, mm. whereas whereas with God himself is the one who ultimately fulfills us. So anyway, I came across John 8, 44, mm -hmm. where Jesus says, Satan is a liar and the father of lies. And mm. it hit me, oh, he invented lying. <laughs> you know, Interesting. It comes from him. Mm. And, and if you go way back to Genesis in the beginning, God creates the world, everything is good. He hasn't even created Eve yet. And in chapter two, he tells Adam, hey, you know, he gives him all the, the garden to cultivate and enjoy. And then he says, but there's one tree in the garden that you shall not eat. You know, he says, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. This is verse 17 of Genesis 2. For the day that you eat from it, you shall surely die. Hmm. And the next verse is he said, it's not good for him to be alone. Then he creates Eve. So it's Adam's one that's given this command. But obviously Eve knows it. By chapter three, Satan comes to Eve disguised as a serpent, yes. okay? And we think of a scary snake, but I think he was more of a beautiful creature in the mm. garden looking, mm. and he could talk, you know, mm -hmm. it's like it's kind of weird. Anyway, it said the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, indeed, has God said you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? Mm. And it, or it could be in Hebrew, every tree of the garden. Mm. So, so, what what's he doing right here he's he's giving a truth but he's twisting it to yeah. doubt the love of god and the purpose of god yeah and that's what he always does he wants yes. to get us off the love of god and the purpose of god and the woman she answers correctly you know from the tree of the trees of the garden we can eat but from the tree that's in the middle of the garden god said you shall not eat from it or touch it now god didn't say touch it at least it's not recorded he might have mm. said that but mm. the bible doesn't record that god said to touch it but you see she's got fear a holy fear mm -hmm. at this point of god so mm -hmm. she's adam's passed this on to her she's believing it and she has even a fear i can't go near this tree and then here comes the lie so mm -hmm. that's true god put a tree in the middle of the garden said don't eat it because did. your eyes will be opened and and you'll know now you, you, they didn't know evil at this point and so what's the satan do the the serpent said to the woman, "You shall not die." Mm. Well, yeah. that's the lie. Okay, yeah. and it comes. God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God. You know, so mm -hmm. He begins with the lie. So I think yes. that that's that we need to go back there and see. Yes, He He knew what was going on. He mm -hmm. knew what God's intent was, mm -hmm. and His intent was to warp it. In this case. He, he's yeah. right there. We yeah. see who he is right in the beginning. So, anyway, and only other scripture I'd say, fast forward way to the New Testament, when mm -hmm. Jesus, yes. who's God in human flesh, he's yes. baptized and he begins his public ministry first by going into the wilderness. The Holy Spirit leads him into the wilderness mm -hmm. to be tempted by the devil. He's going to be victorious, but he fasts for 40 days and 40 nights. Oh, yes. Satan comes to him in his weakness. He always looks for us those cracks, those places he can come mm -hmm. and bring the lie. Mm -hmm. And he he brings three temptations to Jesus. But the interesting thing to me is in the second one, he actually quotes scripture to Jesus. Mm. He quotes the scripture, which is true, but then tries to get him to uh, inaccurately imply it. Instead of don't trust in God, God said this about you. Instead, I'm going to get you to trust in yourself. And he's trying to get him to follow me. The last one mm -hmm. is, hey, all the kingdoms of the world have been given to me. If you fall down and worship me, I'll give them to you. Hmm. And he he, he's, he says, see, say, uh, Jesus answers him with scripture. It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Yes. And then mm -hmm. Satan departs from him. And in one of the gospels, Luke, it says, until an opportune time. In other words, mm -hmm. he's going to try again. But yeah. he was not victorious. But the middle one, he says, hey, it's been written that if you cast yourself off a pinnacle, you know, the angels will pick you up and carry you off. So why don't you do it? Mm -hmm. You know, so he takes a true scripture and says, why don't you test? And Jesus answered, it is also written, you shall not test the Lord your God. In other words, yes. I don't have to test my father because he was going to care for me. And yes, he's going to care for me in that way, but I don't have to prove it. Mm -hmm. by taking it into my own hands. And yes. I think that when we believe some of these lies, we kind of take our life into our own hands and we mm -hmm. begin to do things or and mm. so he's always going to he's always going to test us to not trust in God, his goodness, his love and his purpose and trust in ourselves or trust in this other thing. So mm. anyway, that's sort of a foundational yes. thought. So we we need to remember it's a battle of the mind. 
Okay, yes. because it's how we think is going to lead us into yes. how we live. Yes. And uh -huh. so, uh, you know, that quote, what we think about God is the most important thing about us. So I think mm. we have to remember he is truth. How is he viewing the situation? So. You are enjoying content brought to you by Intentional, a crowdfunded nonprofit that desires to help families and marriages all around the world in the area of discipleship and spiritual formation. This offering is completely free, thanks to the generosity of our growing community of Legacy Builders. Legacy Builders is a group of people from all over the world that gives monthly to fuel this dream that we have in our hearts of seeing discipleship to Jesus in the family become a way of life. A monthly gift of five, 10, or even $30 can continue to fuel this ministry forward. Our dream is to invite people like you to join and partner with us at a financial level and to see this work integrated into families. So as you listen to this podcast, would you prayerfully consider joining us? Would you allow the Spirit to lead you, even if it's just a few dollars a month? Thank you so much. And may the Spirit of Jesus give you wisdom, clarity and joy as you pray about joining us. If you want to join today, go to intentionalparents.org and click on Give. So that's foundational, and it's even mm -hmm. encouraging to know how Jesus was tempted in a very similar way by Satan himself, mm -hmm. right? So that's yeah. a really interesting thing is that Satan uses that same pattern. Mm -hmm. It's almost all true, mm -hmm. but there's a part of it that's a lie. And I mean, we yeah. are no exception to that at all you mm -hmm. you said you had a verse elizabeth honey in uh second corinthians is that where you're is that the one? Oh yeah just um just a short simple verse second corinthians 11 14 says for satan himself masquerades as an angel of light yes. mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. this idea that the things he tells us or tries to get us to believe or usually have this like alluring i mean sometimes it's just straight up condemning but oftentimes it's like this alluring oh that sounds nice hmm. and I, I was just thinking about as dad was talking you know also like the spirit of god often gives us this deep spirit of discernment and wisdom the more we grow in listening to it hmm. and so i think you know sometimes we might hear something i think of even in the parenting world like there's so much parenting advice yeah. and parenting methods and psychology just swirling right now and mm. so much of it is so good and so helpful and so true and yet sometimes i'll be like hearing something or watching something and have like almost a check in my spirit of like i, I don't know what i think about that or i don't know how that mm. fits with what the bible says or mm. and so it just got me thinking of like i think sometimes it would be a really good practice for us to pause and listen to that what's the small part of me that's mm. like I don't know what I think about this. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if I believe that's entirely true. Mm -hmm. um, because I think the enemy has this such a deceptive quality sometimes of making something sound so good mm -hmm. that is actually not quite the heart of God. Maybe mm. bits and pieces are, yeah. but aren't fully. And then also just realizing how much the lies he gets us to believe feel so deeply personal to us mm -hmm. because the enemy knows our woundings, knows where he can trap us. But when we're willing to speak them out into the light, even if they're unresolved, we don't have a solution for them, maybe we're believing them so heavily that we are living in immense guilt and shame. But the minute we're willing to share them with somebody else, both mm -hmm. with God and with a person right in front of us, it's like just the act of putting it out into the light, out of our bodies, into mm -hmm. like relationship with somebody else, mm -hmm. you know, it's almost like they instantly lose their power or we mm. can see that 10% that is a lie. Mm -hmm. mm. And then if it's somebody who knows us well and loves us and loves the Lord, then they get to speak the truth over us, the 90% that is true. Mm. There's so much healing power in that. So sometimes these deeply rooted lies that we're really living into, I think, especially in our parenting, we can find so much freedom in just talking about them. Mm. Like, that's true. I had sent that's out true. this group text with a bunch of moms in preparation for the motherhood retreat, just trying Wasn't to get. Wasn't it like 30 moms? How many moms was it? I think 15? it was like 20. Close. It's a lot. Um, I almost didn't send it. 
because I was realizing I'm asking them to be vulnerable on this massive text chain. But <laughs> I was trying to identify what are some common things we're all believing. So I sent them kind of this list and basically it was like, what, what resonates with you? And the beauty that unfolded over the next couple of hours, and if those of you who are on that text chain are listening and you were annoyed with how much your phone was blowing up, mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> but almost everyone was basically sharing, yes, this is what I'm believing. And then everyone was responding with, oh my gosh, me too. And I'm also mm. believing dot, dot, dot. And then everyone else, me too. I believe all of those things. Like there wasn't a lie on there that I didn't 100% connect with. And then as the as the hours went on, you heard almost every person say, man, I feel like I just had a therapy session. Mm. <laughs> because there's something about unburdening the lies to each other that is yes. so beautiful. Yeah. So That's I think really even as said. people are listening, if you're like, oh my gosh, I resonate with this, start talking to your community. Hey, I'm realizing I really believe this lie often. This is where God gets me. I just mm. need you to know that. You know, because mm -hmm. yeah. think about it, like when I, I know the different wounding that like the people I'm closest to carry and I can make those wounds worse or I can yeah. be a yeah. just knowing, oh, when I say this, you actually hear something totally different. Like then we can you approach were making it. my wounds worse this morning. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was. <laughs> it's okay. It's very it's true. Very, I do not get this real, right it's much real of life. the time. It's real life. <laughs> Yeah, but think about no, like kidding. how we can be just such a compassionate place of healing when we know the lies that people believe. Sure. Yeah. Sure. sure. You know, it's totally interesting right. just listening to you talk. You just described a, a current relevant what what uh, you know to to lie to lie is to not trust in God, right? Mm -hmm. And sure. so it actually is sin because sin is just missing the mark. God just loves us and wants us to trust in Him. But in James, where it says in uh, James James five sixteen, confess your sin to one another, mm -hmm. and pray for one another so that you may be healed. You're saying mm -hmm. there was some healing mm -hmm. that happened, like a yeah. therapy session, Over when a text people chain. were and to confess just means to agree with. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I agree, I, I agree that that's a lie, and I've been trusting in it. And so there was a healing that happened. That's exactly mm -hmm. what it says here. Yeah, when we will do that, but yeah. so often we don't want to do that because no. we're embarrassed to actually say i've been believing this lie mm -hmm. but you know mm. to hear you talk about the healing that took place it's right there it's exactly yeah yeah a, a, a current example of what yeah. james five sixteen says yeah. and yeah. i love yeah. in that verse it doesn't just say confess your sins to god so that you may be healed to it's one confess another. your to sins one, one exactly. to another and pray for one another yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so okay. that you may be healed yeah okay so i love something you said phil is that actually believing the lie is or, or trusting the lie and mm -hmm. acting out of that is a basis or is kind of a root of sin. So out of that, I make sinful choices because I'm actually trusting in the lie itself. Yeah, I think that's God, a, a really good insight. Yes, because you know there's another verse in uh, in the Old Testament. I think it's in in on our past scripture that we love, Second Chronicles twenty, yeah, yeah. where they're crying out to God in the and the Lord speaks, yeah. put your Trust, trust in the Lord and yes. you will be established. Right. So God says, trust me. I'm right. the solid rock. Right. Build your life on me, mm. not on this thing or that thing. And so I yeah. think that mm. ultimately for our good, the Lord, he just loves us and wants yes. us to walk with him and trust in him. Yeah. And he'll mm. provide for all of our needs. You know? We want to invite you to the Intentional Motherhood Retreat 2024. Last year, over 600 mothers gathered together to learn, to worship, both to encourage and to be encouraged. The Father spoke and the Spirit moved and Jesus healed. And it was so incredible that we cannot wait to do it again. We want to invite you October 3rd through 5th here in Bend, Oregon, where we live. We know that the journey of motherhood is both beautiful and it is hard. It is both life-giving and exhausting at times. And we just want to create space for the Spirit to refresh you in your journey. We're going to lean in to how motherhood so gently and beautifully leads us in the way of spiritual formation. We're going to talk about how we need each other on the journey. We're going to talk about how our connection with God ultimately impacts the connection that we have with our kids. This retreat is both for mothers who desire to be mothers someday, all the way to grandmothers. 
and anywhere in between because the truth is we all need each other. We need to learn from each other and we need to be together. It was Dallas Willard who said, if you don't come apart for a while, you will come apart in a while. And that is especially true for us mothers. So we just invite you to come away with us. Let's see what the Spirit wants to do and we can't wait to see you. I love that. Yeah. Well, I think that is really good foundation and I want to get into these lies mm -hmm. because we're going to highlight three because we've learned with our team, we can't do more than three or it becomes very problematic. <laughs> be here for hours. <laughs> be here for too long. But, and we're going to try to balance out some of the time, but uh, we're going to talk about three specific lies that we've identified that humans believe, but I think it, uh, parents especially. And I think it's important to also highlight that for a distracted parent who is not necessarily as in tune to what's happening with their kids, these might not actually come onto your radar. So if you are in a particular season of life where you're more distracted in your parenting, or maybe like being intentional is not even really on your radar as important, this might not resonate as much. But I also think that these lies are lies that really just span the human experience. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we're going to talk about it as it pertains to some of your parenting, but I really think it's something that any human in at one point or another will resonate mm -hmm. with. So with that, the first of the lies that we often believe is that our worth is based on what we can produce. So the first lie mm -hmm. that our worth is based on what we can produce. So Diane, I know you had some thoughts on this one. This is my lie. This is your lie. <laughs> so since this is the um, one that you you uh, threw in the hat, I'd love for you yeah. to maybe even just kind of explain yeah. that a little bit. So this is a newly discovered lie for me. I don't think I realized until really this past year how much I believe this, that my worth is based on what I do, whether I do it for people or whether, you know, tangible measurable i'm meeting my responsibilities i'm doing i'm holding up my end mm -hmm. i'm doing my stuff and uh at the beginning of this year i prayed a very dangerous prayer mm -hmm. and um realizing so i'll turn um 65 in just a couple weeks and it just feels like 65 feels really significant you know mm -hmm. um and it is it's you know, at my 60th birthday party, I said something along the lines of I'm at the threshold of old age hmm. and kind of with 65 to think, OK, I'm solidly in there and <laughs> and finding it to be at the one hand, a delightful place in my life, but very aware that as old age comes, that that it's kind of downhill from here. I mean, to be really honest, your strength is beginning to wane. Mm -hmm. And um, so I prayed Psalm 139, which I've prayed many, many times in my life. But this felt like an urgency, like God was telling me, let an invitation to let me in a little deeper into your life. Um, and it's in verse 23, David praying, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me. Some versions say, try me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me. And in the margin, it says way of pain. Mm. So so we're really talking about the mm. um, shadow side, people call it your hurts, your wounds. See if there are any wounds in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So I mm. started praying that. just be, And then in my own language, asking God, okay, so so would you just do a deeper cleaning out of my soul um, so that I go into old age, mm. I'm going to cry because I always cry, um, <laughs> being a genuine blessing, mm. like to my grandkids, to the people I'm close to, but most of all my kids, why am I crying? Mm. Anyway, and I felt just such a, a peace as soon as I started praying that. Mm. Well. It feels like this whole year has been, mm. since praying that, has been that he's been doing that. Mm. The main lie that I feel like I've uncovered is this, I think my value is in what I do for other people. Mm. And 
And this is a really important lie to to abolish and to Mm -hmm. replace with the truth. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't, in the years ahead, when I can do less for other people, my worth goes plummeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Such an insidious lie because Mm -hmm. we are to serve each other and to bless Mm -hmm. each other and to be there for each other. And we're hearing all these beautiful things about attachment to be able to see each other and to be present Mm -hmm. to each other and aware of each other. And that all involves a certain Mm -hmm. amount of doing. Mm -hmm. And of course, I want to be a responsible member of a team or member of a family. Mm. So it's so embedded in, it really is embedded in truth, um, but it's lie. It's mm-hmm. a lie that mm-hmm. I, my worth is based on what I do or produce or accomplish. Um, and I feel like, especially as we get older, I mean, I think there's two stages of life where this is really important to combat. One is when we're parents. Mm-hmm. because we'll just drive our kids crazy, we'll drive mm-hmm. our spouse crazy, we'll expect things from ourselves that are are beyond our capability, and then we become, what, depressed or anxious or crabby, mm-hmm. critical or mm-hmm. judgmental, because mm-hmm. we're pushing, pushing, pushing. And the next time that I think this is really important is as we get older, mm. because I want to be able to convey convey to Scarlett and Sunday and Sloane and Birdie and my daughters that their worth is in just being fully who they are mm. and allowing us to see God in their lives, mm. not because of perfection, but because mm. there's just a beauty in their reflection of God. So. There I go on and on. But I just feel like this is a having just discovered this life. Now I look back and think how much of my life was really enslaved by this life. Mm. And that's not good. Mm. That's not good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. What uh, are some of the things? Sorry, honey. Okay. I was just going to ask a question. Yeah. What are some of the things that you've been doing to help undo that lie? To believe the truth and not the lie. Does that make sense? Okay. As far as doing goes, I feel like the lie get got uncovered not by somebody pointing it out, but in my quiet time with the Lord. Mm. You know, number one, asking him do the, to cleanse mm-hmm. the inner recesses of my heart um, and, to, and to keep looking for ways of pain in me, mm-hmm. especially pain that I could inflict on others. So... The, the main thing I feel like he keeps telling me is when I feel like my worth is threatened by my perceived criticism from another person or I didn't mm. meet a deadline or I didn't perform, you know, um, realizing that it's my lie. I'm oh, yeah. reading my lie into what other people say or don't say mm. to me. Yeah. And I, that's a very dangerous thing to do in mm. relationships because nobody's able to, like, I love that you just were talking about understanding um, somebody else's woundedness so that you mm. can be a life giver to them. That's mm. beautiful. Mm. But in reality, I don't want to be that person who people are having to tiptoe around. <laughs> oh. And I, yeah. my yeah. lie, this lie makes people tiptoe around me. Mm. I have no doubt about it. Mm. Like, Need, I'm needing something from other people that I think only God can give me. Mm. And um, also, I've been reading a wonderful book, and I'm going to forget her name. <sighs> Treasures in the Darkness by... Catherine Wolf. Catherine oh, Wolf. Oh, so good. So, I mean, get the, if you believe this lie, yeah. get her book. We'll put that I mean, in the honestly, show notes for she sure. obviously has... She had a massive stroke as yeah. a very 26-year-old woman... Her mm. capability of performing and doing, I mean, completely, yeah. almost taken away from her mm. entirely. And um, and the insights, the pra- she's very practical, the mm-hmm. practical insights, all the things you couldn't do as a mom that we take for granted mm. yeah. as a woman, as, yeah. you know. What a helpful, um, what a helpful yeah. awareness you're bringing to so many who struggle with that lie. I think, yeah. Thank you for your transparency. You were going to say something. Do you remember what it was, it was or did I throw you off by asking a question? I don't remember if this is what I was going to say, but <laughs> I love the scripture that you read 
when David, that's one of my favorite yeah. prayers to pray and mm -hmm. scriptures. But I think it's so interesting that in that scripture that helped uncover that life for you, it says, see if there's any anxious way in me. Mm -hmm. And what I find about doing, especially when we have, I think, depend, and it all goes back to often family of origin and wounding. A lot of us have different motivations for doing yeah. and feeling like our worth is produced in that. Okay. For some, it's that's how they got approval mm -hmm. from their parents. Um, mm -hmm. And that's maybe the only time that they got that feedback. So for mm -hmm. some people, it's doing to be helpful to other people. For some people, it's doing an exceptional job so that you get feedback from people. You are so amazing. You are so, yeah. you know, which is meeting a very felt need that yep. wasn't met as a mm -hmm. kid, mm -hmm. you know. But what happens when we are not able to do is immediate anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're it so is. used to managing those anxieties and those wounds yeah. that come up by doing. Yeah. It's a great like like for me, I don't feel like my actual worth and identity is in what I produce, but I produce and do to manage anxiety sometimes. So my go-to when I'm feeling I didn't uh, know. Be quiet. That. <laughs> I'm just kidding. When I'm feeling <laughs> anxious or things are out of control, mm -hmm. I immediately start cleaning my house. Yeah. And it actually doesn't have anything well, actually, to do with- Well, actually, it's called with, rage cleaning. Uh, it is true. Uh, but I don't know me, anybody you could no, have gotten that no from. Idea. But for me, the internal motivation is not because somebody might walk into my house uh -huh. and I want them to feel good about me. nobody cares. That's the other part. Or nobody that like cares. I want to create such a clean environment for my children. I want to help them. <laughs> no. That's really not the motivation. It's all- Yes. Because it calms my inner anxieties. Yeah. Okay. So I think that I just think the doing oftentimes comes from various different places. Yes. But there's usually anxiety attached to all of yes. it. Yes. You yeah. know, and so yes. I just think that's so that's interesting that the scripture specifically says, God, is there any way of anxiety yes. in me or yes. any hurtful way in me? Yes. Or some translations are way of pain in me. It's yes. both. Yeah. I think that's yeah. so interesting. I think it is too. Good yeah. And being aware and just. The beauty that we have an intimate walk with God, a father who wants to talk to us, who knows we are but dust. The psalmist says that's another thing I just love. He knows. Mm -hmm. It's not a surprise to mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. um, and that he will actually point these ways of pain out yeah. to us in the gentlest ways. Hmm. And, and even put, pre this, this is what this year has been for me, is almost feeling pressure in this area of my life because he loves me so much mm. that he wants to heal this area he mm. wants to heal the life mm. and um i That's just beautiful. think it's amazing that he's like that to us mm -hmm. yes i just but it's safe i guess i would tell anybody who's listening who who believes that lie it's safe to go to the father and say will you will you free me of this lie mm -hmm. and you know it's not easy. It's easier to coast and not be very aware and distract yourself with doing mm -hmm. and keep proving. But it will catch up with us at mm -hmm. some point because it's an insidious lie. Mm -hmm. And it's. I just wanted to remind you that the Father himself is so safe. Yeah. He adores mm -hmm. you exactly where you are right now, like how you are, whether you are a highly capable producer or whether you're struggling right now and mm -hmm. not feeling well and mm -hmm. maybe don't have a high energy level or or you're just struggling mm -hmm. um i just think he's safe to remember that he's safe to go to him and say here's a line believe me will you will you heal me mm -hmm. of this? absolutely yeah. phil you had one more thought before we move oh, on to the just next a one a short scripture came to mind when i was listening to diane speak you know mm -hmm. we're you know, we're talking to parents here, so yes. we're talking about the lies we believe, but I was thinking of our children. Uh -huh. So like hmm. Diane shared before, some of her wounds go back to her childhood where sure. she was not like the other producers in the family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Made like if you would produce more, then you'd be then loved you, more. You'll yeah. be loved more. Well, they loved mm -hmm. her, but she wasn't feeling this. And yeah. so I think we as parents have the joy of communicating to our kids 
doesn't mean you don't discipline them or no. correct them or teach yeah. them how to work. Yeah. Yeah. But that your love for them is unconditional. Like mm. I love. And so the verse that popped into my mind is Jeremiah, you know, who was called the weeping prophet. He was super emotional. Yeah. But he says in chapter 31, the Lord appeared to me, Jeremiah is saying from afar, saying, I have loved you I with know. an everlasting love. Yeah. Therefore, I've drawn you with loving kindness. Yeah. Mm. And I think that's what Diane is saying. She was feeling like, well, I need to do more. When in reality, there are good works for her to do, and she's doing them. Ephesians says there's stuff for us to do. Mm -hmm. We do it out of worship and out of joy because we are so loved. Yeah. And so, again, it gets down what what was what was Satan trying to do to get Eve to not trust in the love of God? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If God really loved you, he'd tell you you could eat from that tree. Sure. And so so it's believing that we have been loved with an everlasting eternal yeah. love and God's drawing us and he loves us as we are, but he loves us too much to let us stay where we are. Yeah. So that's the molding part. But I just yeah. think it's so beautiful that here she is at 65, almost years old, mm. still having to work this out. Yeah. Because part of it goes back to a childhood wound, so it's mm -hmm. like, and and none of and we're all going to wound our kids. I'm not saying yeah. we're going to do it perfectly, sure. but, know that. but it just <laughs> it should motivate us to say, "Wow, I get to, I get to express to my kids." When I mean, you guys, Brooke and Elizabeth, you do this so well with mm. Duke Scarlet, none of them doubt your love for them. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, they are the most mm. loved. You know, mm. kids. Sloan missed you the most. I know yeah. she's Maybe very the other day they're coming back, but <laughs> so, when's dad going to The be last here? day I'm... was, I, I want to go home and take a nap. I go, you never want to go home and take, you never want to go home and take a nap after school. I miss daddy. <laughs> you know, like she, lo she knows that I'm... you love her and she yeah. wants to be in your yeah. arms. Yeah. And I think that's a picture of God loves us and wants us to be in his arms. So. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing yeah. with yeah. Sloan. There's nothing. Loving kindness. There's nothing a cuddle won't solve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally. <laughs> I love literally. That. Yes. This morning, <laughs> so... she had one day a week, they have this community day they go to. Normally she loves it, but she started crying last night saying she didn't want to go. And I'm like internally like, she has to go. We're podcasting <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah. Free babysitter. We're going to talk to parents about parenting. You have to be out of the house. <laughs> she came in my bathroom this morning, wrapped up in a blanket, moaning and crying the minute she woke up. And I was in the shower. The whole time I'm in the shower, she's laying on the bathroom floor crying. I'm trying to talk to her. And I got out and I just, and I'm not always good at doing this with her. She's our most like oppositional, rough, tough. And at the same time, she so responds to just gentle presence yes. more, more than, than any anywhere. kid I've ever yes. seen. Yeah. Yeah. So I just said, do you want me to cuddle you on the couch in our room? And she goes, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I just held her for a couple of minutes while she's kind of moaning and just hugged her. And I, you're so brave. I even grown ups sometimes have to do stuff they don't want to do. And yeah. it's hard. <laughs> And <laughs> like mommy not wanting to do this podcast today. <laughs> <laughs> and I just said, would you like some breakfast? And she goes, mm -hmm. so yeah. walked her downstairs. Like that's all she that's needed. All it took. Yeah. yeah. And there were, she had a little, little few Well, after moments. breakfast, she came over to sit with me mm -hmm. and I said, do you just want to cuddle? She goes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> same thing, yeah. the same deal. But it's so yeah. interesting. So My weird. tendency is to meet her opposition with opposition. You okay. need to do what I said, yeah. you need, which blows up in my face every time with her. Uh, but if uh -huh. I slow down and am just present to her, yeah. she melts. Yes. Every like time. absolutely yeah. melts. I feel better. She feels better. Yeah. And it, I That's feel like beautiful. I'm learning about the presence of God. Yeah. I just think of like, how yeah. much is God like, I just want you to sit down for a second right. and just acknowledge beautiful. that I'm here so that I can comfort you yeah. and mm. give you everything that you need. That's yeah. great. And then I feel like it helps you read the scriptures through a different lens when you see just the immense presence yes. of God. Yeah. But almost always it's a we reach out and then he's right there. We have a new offering for you. If you'd like to receive daily or weekly text messages and encouragement around parenting, marriage, with prayers and scriptures, click the link in the show notes and we would love to send those to you. Can't wait to connect more with you. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And so. it's it's a presence and the approval of God yes. too. Just mm. yes. one of the best things that I can do when I'm struggling with this is to go on, I call them a worship walk. Mm -hmm. It's not for exercise. I have to keep telling myself, mm -hmm. slow down. <laughs> oh, that's I'm hard not trying to achieve anything here. 
<laughs> um, and I just go out and I worship him and I look at everything. I mean, I live in a beautiful place on God's creation and I just worship him. Mm. By the time I'm home, mm. I'm my eyes are off myself and my own inadequacies or shortcomings and I'm great. I'm happy. I'm filled with the love and, of the Holy Spirit. Mm. So I think that's also a really effective way to combat any alive. That's any really, alive. that's a, re a worship walk. Take that. That's a great Diane, Diane classic. And all the moms who have little kids right now are like, oh, what do I do instead of a worship walk? I can't come <laughs> I on know, worship walk. Do a worship leave. cry. It's where you cry Find in your room in the dark. in your backyard. <laughs> <No>. uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so the second lie, uh, and I mean this one I think hits most people, but the lie that I'm just a bad parent. Yeah. Mm. Or maybe for you, I'm just a bad person. Um, now, here's the truth. Some people are bad parents. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's important. Oh, that's to, very encouraging. Yeah, yeah thanks, Dave. I, I think it's, no, but I mean, we're talking about extremes. Yeah. Yes. Some people need to feel the conviction of this yes. and some people believe it too much. And I'm highlighting both because I think it is important to realize yes. some people, most people that feel like they're not being good parents, at least in my experience, are often doing a great job mm -hmm. as parents. It's mm -hmm. actually how they're, feeling they know too much. I feel like actually Elizabeth and I, I was telling Elizabeth about this the other day. I was like, I feel like I know too much about what our yes. kids might not be getting yeah. that it makes it really challenging a lot of the times to wh when you are giving them stuff. It's like, I, I can now be hyper aware because of all the information that we can absorb and understand yes. of all the things yeah. that our it's kids aren't getting or all the things I can't give them. And well, what does that do not only now, but to for their whole life? And, and you can, yeah. you know, begin to spiral. And so mm -hmm. I guess it's all to say, like, for some, the conviction of the Holy Spirit of you being a bad parent, maybe that's actually a word like, hey, step into it, be more present. Bad parent might be a strong word. But I think most of the time, this is a lie that good parents believe mm -hmm. yeah. and that you're not Maybe giving too. them enough. Um, I know for me, it's really funny because I'm raising my kids in a way that I wasn't raised. Now, and why that's interesting is because I don't know what it's like to be parented as I'm parenting them. So there's a lot okay. of times when I actually don't know what it feels like on their end. I'm like, well, I know I'm doing what I think is the right thing, but I actually don't know what it's like. Do, do, do you feel safer? Do you feel, uh, you know, that I'm being present? Do you feel that that correction is like what's needed, but at the same time it's in love. So it's not destructive. It's, it's, you know, instructive, it's helpful. So I guess it is a really tricky one. I would say for me, I struggle with this one. I definitely struggle with this one of feeling like I'm just not, where I'm at as a parent. And then there's times just like the other people where it's like, no, I do need to, I actually need to grow in some stuff. But I think there's a lot of the times that I, I believe that. Yeah, this is a huge one for me. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, where does it show up for you? I think what my tendency is, let's see if I can put this in a way that's clear, is if there's an area that I do actually need to grow in that mm -hmm. is like I'm being convicted by the spirit. I feel like where the enemy spins it for me is broadening it out to the whole instead of the one specific thing. So mm, I will believe that's good. That's I'm good. just doing a terrible job and I will, I will experience it and say it as like this big broad, I'm failing in every area. Mm. I'm a terrible mom, I'm a terrible wife, I'm a terrible homeschooler. Like, <laughs> um, good enough is like not mm -mm. in my vocabulary mm -hmm. ever. I'm growing in. It's actually, be actually, I feel like in the last couple of years, it's becoming more of a something I can connect with. But so I, does that make sense that like there mm -hmm. might be one area that God is mm -hmm. trying to show me something mm -hmm. and I know it's an area I need to grow in. I know it's an area I'm hurting my kids or whatever. But instead of actually dealing with that area, I just feel totally defeated. I'm just bad at all of it. I'm wounding yeah. them deeply. I'm not practicing what I preach. Like it just becomes this huge thing. So I feel like for me, what's been really helpful is when I can recognize, because this is one I think we can live into without even having really conscious awareness that this is what we're carrying. But if mm. I can recognize it's what I'm carrying and then pause and try to get specific like it's easy to say this big, I'm just this thing, like my, my, the whole of me is bad. Hmm. But if we can peel back the layers and say, no, where is it that I'm feeling 
I need to grow or I'm like really not, I'm doing the same thing over and over again and it's not working or, Mm -hmm. and that's really freeing to be like, no, I'm Mm -hmm. actually, even this morning with Sloan, I believe often I am not a present parent. I am too busy. I'm here. I talk about being present all the time, but it's like hard for me. Being present is hard for me. And so even this morning as I'm sitting with Sloan, I had to talk to myself and say, I might not get it right all the time, but right now I'm being present to her. Like that's a win. For me, who is really hard on myself and is not like spinning everything for the positive and convincing myself I'm doing a great job, I do the opposite. For me, that's important to sit there and say, right now in this moment, I think I got it right. And I might, mm-hmm. yeah. I might yeah. need to continue to really grow in being yeah. present with her specifically because I know she needs it so deeply right now. Yeah. Um, hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, like, yeah. yeah. I think it's such an important sense. lie to get specific I about. I think you're right about the specifics because generalities don't help. And I agree. Yeah. I think there's usually an area that kind of paints over the whole. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. I was also going to say, though, I think your spouse, especially if you guys are in a, a healthy place and then mm-hmm. also that your spouse you're 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 teaming up your parenting and team yeah i think that's where your spouse can be really helpful yes like hey i'm feeling like a really bad parent what are you noticing yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know yeah. and it's a hard thing to ask it's also a vulnerable thing to ask but i think it's it important because there's often times when i'm feeling that when she'll come and say what are you talking about and and yeah. when she says that that helps me know oh i think this is far more internal it's far more a lie I'm believing. It's yeah. not as felt because she yeah. also knows when I am off and I am being grumpy a couple of days ago. And she <laughs> and she's like, you're just being grumpy to everybody. <laughs> and like, I know those moments, those are yeah. pretty clear, yeah. mm-hmm. but but there's a lot of times when it's internal. And so I think even, I, I, really, I really think your point about being specific and yeah. inviting your spouse Mm-hmm. Or if you're a single parent, inviting a friend into this, like, hey, you're spending time with me or who, who's the person that knows you the best, spends the most time with yeah. you, mm-hmm. invite them in, ask them. I, I also them. think as your kids get older, <laughs> they tell you, they tell you, but, but yeah. in beautiful ways, yeah. like I sometimes not so often, not. well, I'm going to give a good example. Sometimes yeah. not. Yes, that's for sure. Like Duke this morning, told <laughs> me I was apologizing <laughs> to him for how I responded to something. I said, I didn't mean to stress you out more, but I'm sure I didn't. He goes, oh, yes, you did. <laughs> like, oh, thanks. But. <laughs> Ironically, you stressed me out more. I know, I stressed amazing. everybody out was, in my own stress. It was amazing. It was a gift. Um, <laughs> <laughs> also, we could podcast today. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but I so often believe, because it is partially true that I'm overly critical to my kids that I don't encourage enough and I just point out all the areas they need to grow and both Duke and Scarlett in my Mother's Day cards oh, they wrote yes. me these beautiful cards and both of them this. said in their own words how grateful they am for how gracious I am to them mm. <laughs> I love that my favorite part about that was how surprised you were yes. like you were just genuinely surprised they just like, like beautifully wrote about how I'm so gracious with them yeah. when they mess up when they you know but that's not what you feel and that's not what I believe that is yeah. not how I view yeah. myself as mm. a parent right. so I think there's there's also this beautiful thing that starts to happen as your kids start to tell you yes what the things you need to grow in for sure Hmm. And the areas where they're experiencing you in a healing way yeah. where you think you're doing it in hmm. a hurtful way. Okay, so I, c- I can totally see this in you because inside you're probably battling constantly You could with your kids the same message you tell yourself. Yes. I could always, there's always room for yes. improvement. I could always do better. Yes. I could always do better. Yep. And that's going on inside of you but i can testify it doesn't come out oh good side of you really so i think the word (laughs) gracious is perfect for you because it's not just that you don't notice how they could do be better that's not even possible for you Mm -hmm. and that's a gift in many ways but but the fact that they're not experiencing what you're thinking inside <laughs> mm. is is yeah. a work of the spirit in your life yeah. of incredible redemption and um, 
just, just using something really beautiful because mm -hmm. you're never going to become this laid back person who just mm -hmm. honestly doesn't care. Ah, no worry about it. No. It, this yeah. is an act of no, you the will. It's that for idea you. that you can't change how you see. You can no. only change what you do with how you see. Exactly. Yeah. And I think for me, the journey moving forward is that's really good to hear that I'm mindful enough to manage how it's yes. coming out. But I think the true journey of healing for me will be the internal yes. accepting how God yes actually views me and not yes. just how i view myself exactly and that's what i hope to grow in moving forward mm -hmm. but i will say the number one thing that i like i i look at myself and with all that goes on internally in me and how i used to operate had we not suffered deeply yeah. and had not all of my ideals of what mm -hmm. our family honestly would look like where i joke like brutally ripped from me and it, that's what it felt like hmm. but honestly it's been the biggest gift to my personhood to our kids to how we parent mm -hmm. i think there are certain things that are only rooted out of you in force <laughs> you know um if we let them and some yeah. things god just graciously slowly over time mm -hmm. lets us evolve in and i think for me it took all of my ideals being yeah. shattered yeah all of, to really see the kids in front of me, to really learn what each of them need from me because they all need a little bit different of a, mm -hmm. you know, I'm thinking of Scarlett especially. She already internalizes so much shame. If I get black and white or tell her the things she could have done differently, it is so overwhelming to her. Mm -hmm. But if I just respond with, it's okay, I mess up too. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's okay, it's you're not gift. bad, you're not weird. Yeah then it's, she can do all the stuff she needs to do to get herself to where she needs to go. Yeah. If I just am there to remind her, it's okay. You're yeah. not, like everybody yeah. goes through what you're going through. Yeah. You're not a failure. You know, that's yeah. the primary thing she needs to hear from me. Yeah. You know, but yeah. I don't think I would yes. have been able to see that had no. life not gotten hurt. If you're enjoying this content and you want to go deeper, we have an amazing resource that we want to tell you about. It's the intentional film series, Raising Passionate Jesus Followers. Now, this is an incredible tool for you for spiritual formation in the family. And we created this film series to help parents in their God-given task to raise and disciple their own children. Now, our hope is that we're able to help you and give you some of the tools that I know we so desperately need as we're in the process of raising our kids and Phil and Diane have actually raised their kids. This is a nine session film series on the process of what raising a passionate Jesus follower actually looks like. There's some workable solutions in here. There's a bunch of wisdom from the scriptures and there's a bunch of practical help in your journey as you are raising your children. We cover all sorts of things like parental roles, goals versus values. What is discipline versus punishment? How do I create a heart of obedience in my child where they actually want to obey? What is a heart of self-control look like? Or how do I even help my child in the process of character development? We cover that and so many more things. You can use this film series in a variety of ways. You can use it at your home, preferably with your spouse if that's applicable, with a group of friends or in your community, or even through your local church. All you need to do is head over to our website, intentionalparents.org, click on film series, and then follow the prompts. We have a bunch of other resources there that you can check out, but we do pray that this blesses you in your pursuit of raising passionate Jesus followers. So I love that. That's beautiful. And the last one, which is connected to that, and we're going to go to the last one quick because there's a lot of connection and overlap yeah. uh, to this one. So remember, the first lie is my, my worth is based on what we can produce. Mm -hmm. The second one, I'm just a bad parent, you know. Uh, that whole idea that we just said. And then the last one, and I think this is a lot, I think a lot of moms carry this, but this is really, I think also for a lot of the dads, uh, and this gets messy, but it's all up to me. Mm -hmm. That this whole thing's up to you, everything falls on your shoulders, the financial health, the spiritual health, the physical health, the the state secure of your attachment. family. Secure stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, and not only just secure attachment, but just you you're sneaking that in anywhere you can these days. <laughs> no, because I think it's such a lie that moms are believing cuz yes, yes, that's a whole thing but, for another time. Yes, motherhood that's retreat. A, that's Come another motherhood. yeah, that's another topic, but I mean just the that like that it's all on your shoulders. And I know that that's not just for men, that's for yeah. moms and dads together. Um and where I think this shows up is, you know, we talked about this before, 
but it's that feeling of it's my fault when my kids fill in the blank Mm -hmm. it's my fault when my kids throw a temper tantrum at the store or they're not Mm -hmm. walking with jesus fully the way that i want them to or expect them to or hope them to or you know don't eat vegetables yeah (laughs) those ideals in which that you have that are some good and then some are just maybe unrealistic with who you actually have as Mm -hmm. your kids but i think that's a really important one to identify and to remember what a gift it is for all of us who hold any of that i know i believe that Mm -hmm. lie too to just even hold the tension like oh it's not all up to me it's like my kid's trajectory is hugely impacted by me but it's actually not fully all up to me and that is such a huge weight of relief uh it's not an excuse to step back i think that's really important to say but i i also think like don't forget the power of prayer within yeah. your parenting and, and yeah. i'm thinking of even the the fears that you have of their future because i think a lot of parenting for a lot of people anyway it's not always that you're so so frustrated with the moment although certain moments are frustrating we often project fear into the future of what that becomes and mm-hmm. that becomes the thing that we're most scared of i access from being yeah present. oh i was reading uh i write a, i write a quote down a day but one of the things i i wrote down from ronald rollheiser who's one of my favorite he said uh, about prayer And I think this is perfect for this particular one, if that lie that it's all up to me. He said, if you do not pray, you will either be habitually depressed or obsessed with your own ego. Mm -hmm. It's a really interesting Mm -hmm. thought. And I I just wrote a little thought that came to my mind, which was prayer psychologically centers and calms my nervous system. It does. And it's interesting because not only does prayer, I mean, we know all that stuff. But yeah. I think he just put words in a simple way to say, like, if you hold all of it and think it's all up to you, the craziest thing that happens is your world, you either become habitually depressed or you become obsessed with your ego. And I can say as a man, especially, and for uh, for my friends, those are the those are the extremes. They become mm-hmm. habitually depressed or they become obsessed with their own ego. It's usually not a pretty middle. You know, they're, they're not standing in that blessed middle. So. Anyway, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts about that. But mm-hmm. the lie, it's all up to me. Yeah, <clears throat> my first thought is somebody who believes that is is putting trust in themselves. Remember, yes. it gets back to trust. Yes. Okay. Yes. It, it, God's That's purpose good. for me is, as a follower of Jesus, mm-hmm. is to take up my cross and follow Him. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. and there's all these scriptures coming to my mind. You know, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But the one that just jumped into my mind listening to you talk was. Jesus' words in Matthew 11, where he says to his followers, come to me, yeah. hmm. all you who are weary and heavy laden. And I, I didn't notice this until right now. I've had this Bible since 1973. In the margin, it's come to me, all who who are weary and work to exhaustion, <laughs> mm. <laughs> <Yes>. <clears throat> and yeah. I will give you rest. Hmm. So what he's saying is trust bring your burdens to me you're you're working to exhaustion it's mm. not all on you mm. and That's yes so we good. have a responsibility to carry out and you know what you guys are so good at the reason your kids told you that you're gracious is because most of the time you are you're feeding them and loving them and hugging them and bathing mm. them and, and then when you blow it you ask their forgiveness and mm-hmm. so they see that and their mind can almost mm. forget the the hard moments Mm -hmm. and enjoy the beautiful moments. But I think that we have to realize we bring our kids to the father because Mm -hmm. like I like to say, there's only one perfect father. Our father Mm -hmm. was in heaven. So if I think it's all on me, Mm -hmm. you know, sure. I want to do everything I can to model the father to my kids, Mm -hmm. but I want to bring them to the father. That's what Diane is so good at. She was praying for our kids when she was nursing them. And bringing them to the Father, you know, because hmm. He's the one that is going to love them perfectly. We mm-hmm. can, we won't love them perfectly, but God loves them perfectly. Yes, and we're not alone, you know. In mm-hmm. Philippians one six, for us, He who began a good work in us will complete it. So it's like even when our kids are launched and gone one day, God's not through with them. Mm-hmm. We'll still have influence in their life, but so it's right. not all up to us. So I, I guess I'm thinking, bring them to God. Jesus says, please come to me, come to me. When mm-hmm. don't get, you won't be exhausted, and yeah. I will give you rest. I'm gentle and humble of heart. You know, you shall find rest for your soul. So I think, if mm-hmm. I think it's on me, I'm not going to have any rest for my soul. Everything that mm-hmm. goes wrong is my fault. I should have done this. I better tell him that. 
and you're going to be parenting in the flesh mm. in the power of your own strength where yes. Jesus is saying trust in me I want to be with you I want to help mm -hmm. you and mm -hmm. I want to give you the wisdom you need and so I think we come to him we bring our kids to him so. yeah mm. I think that's really wise and I'd like to just add two things to it one is one of my favorite phrases in all of scripture <clears throat> especially for those of us who think we have more control than we actually do, oh. um, is this woman was coming, and we all know the story of mm -hmm. him, of her pouring perfume on his feet and washing his feet, and she was being criticized for it. Mm -hmm. you know, people didn't like it. It just felt like a waste, and it says uh, in verse, let's see, Mark 14, verse 5, and they rebuked her harshly. Hmm. and Jesus says, leave her alone, and then he explains a little bit, but then in verse 8, she did what she could. Hmm. Yeah. And I think every parent has to realize that, hmm. you know, for some reason God has us have children when we're way too young and immature and unaware, and that's right when we're raising our kids. And hmm. I, I, I think there's something gospel beautiful in that that they see our kids grow up seeing our flaws and failures and we hurt them because of them but then they see 10 years down the road oh my gosh god is transforming even mom and 20 mm. years and yes. that's the other thing that i would want to add to this you are never done being a parent yes so mm. i'm learning at 60 almost 65 that my worth is not in my to my family, to my world, to my people, is not in my doing hmm. entirely. I mean, yes. it's, it's helpful. Now I get to pass that on to my kids who are hmm. probably believing that same lie somewhere inside of them hmm. because I probably pass that lie on to them, but I'm hmm. not done being your parent, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. It's saying to you, listen, don't wait till almost 65 to learn this yeah. lesson, learn it right now when you're in the thick of it mm -hmm. because what scarlet really needs from you is not mm -mm. your clean house or no. her laundry no. done or no. even to take her to do all the things that she mm -mm. thinks she needs to do it really is in mm -hmm. you just being able to see her and say it's okay honey it's yeah. all right mm -hmm. yeah that's beautiful I mean, so that's beautiful. if I, in that way, you're never done. You're always mm. able to go back and make mm. the repairs. Yes. And in those repairs are are the gospel. Mm -hmm. we're, it's mm -hmm. not being we're not saved to be perfect. Mm. We're yeah. being saved for as long as we keep submitting ourselves and opening our our lives to Jesus. It's the basis of all that John Mark is doing with his work with practicing the way. The practices bring us more fully to the Father so that he can transform us into his image. And that is so encouraging mm -hmm. that mm. we're not staying the same. John Mark yeah. who? John Mark. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, it's really funny. The one um, who probably took all the brunt of my immaturity oh, when yes. I had him, yeah. you know. Well, we'll definitely, that's, that's why he's doing well. Um, it's interesting, you know, Phil, you had mentioned Matthew 11, the burden and the yoke. And I think one of the things about that lie specifically I know I have this bracelet and it actually has you can't see this but it actually has Matthew eleven twenty eight ingrained you can oh, wow. ingrain you stuff on you, like anyway this company that I love this jewelry company you can ingrain stuff for free and so I was like I'd love a reminder uh, actually about this it, it the stem of it was from this lie that it's all up to me you know yep. and so maybe to end our time because uh, there's so many different lies that we can all believe in. These are just three. There's many more. A book that John Mark actually wrote, speaking of him, Live No Lies. That's a great book. Yes. Uh, even going oh, yes. in mm -hmm. the deeper, mm -hmm. if you want like a resource that is maybe even uh, far more extensive than our conversation, that's a great resource. But mm -hmm. um, I just would love to end wherever you're at today with the truth of Matthew 11. I'd love to read it in the message translation mm -hmm. because I yeah, actually yes. think it suits the language of the modern person and the parent specifically. So mm -hmm. uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, verse through 30 says, are you tired? Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm alive. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. Uh, the second one, worn out. Oh man, so many people burned out on religion. And I know that some people too. Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. Mm -hmm. I'll show you how to take a real rest. I love that analogy. Mm -hmm. Uh, then it goes on to say, walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. 
And then this line, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Yes. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the goal. No matter where we are at, to live freely and lightly with Jesus, to walk with him. Mm -hmm. And so wherever you are hearing this, whether you're on a run or on, in the car or whether you're watching it at home, I, I hear a lot of moms fold laundry to this mm -hmm. content. So if that's you, um, maybe just identify and bring your spouse into it. What are some of the lies you're believing? Is it that your worth is based on what you can produce? Is it that you think you're a bad parent? Is it that you think it's all up to you? Would you just remember that none of those are true? Mm -hmm. That Jesus has come in ultimately. He is your worth. He's the one that identifies that you're you're not a bad parent. He's giving you the strength to be a good parent. And Matthew 11, it's not all up to you. So yeah. remember the truth of that today wherever you're at. And thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.